Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming out in this old wonderful sunny weather we have in Northern California. We need, you know, the beautiful thing about Northern California, anytime you talk about the rain, everybody can ends, ends whatever they're saying with, but we need it. <laughs> what do you need this morning? Everyone say, greater understanding. Greater understanding. And that's what our topic about uh, this principle involved in our life is all about this morning. The awareness that we have a gift that has already been given. Our challenge is, as Dr. Holmes said, you've been given the gift, why don't you open it up? You've been given the gift, why don't you do something with it? You've been given the gift, why not enhance the world by applying the gift to your life? So if we're going to celebrate the gift, what do we need to do? I was thinking uh, someone um, was talking to me the other day, and they said uh, they were asking about the teaching. They said they've been studying the secret for years. And I said, well, at the Tri-City Church of Religious Science Center for Spiritual Living in Fremont, we have been, uh, we have been revealing the secret for 37 years here in Fremont. Every Sunday we reveal the secret. Every Wednesday, every class we teach is revealing the secret of the universe to the people who want to listen and do something with it. And our challenge here, which has always been, and it was a challenge that was given to me by my teachers, and that it is not enough for people to come and just hear this and know about it. What you want to do is encourage them to be it, to live as if it's so. For 37 years, we have been revealing the secret, and what we have challenged everyone to do is reveal the secret so it's not a secret anymore. To let go and let people see what we teach in your life, not just hear it from you, not just see it in your bookshelf. Everyone say, the fullness and riches of God, fullness and of God. is everywhere evenly present. Everywhere evenly present. See, the whole world is my home. It's evenly present. It's evenly present all the time. It's evenly present in the universe. It is where we are this day. It's where we are every day. It arrived when we arrived. It's with us now. And the great teachers of the age, as Jesus, who is the great example, not the great exception, shared with us our Father. Not some of us, but all of us. God doesn't know anything about religion. It doesn't know anything about denomination it doesn't know anything about difference it is all one thing and as we began to celebrate it as emerson pointed out your religion is what you're doing with your life 24 hours a day seven days a week it's not where you spend an hour on sunday it's not the symbol you have around your neck or whatever you are reading or whatever you're studying it's what you're doing with it now everyone say i know it is so now, here's the challenge, and I demonstrate it. <laughs> See? So I ask you this question. Are you demonstrating what you say you know is so? Are you demonstrating it as your life experience? You see, if we're going to affirm for ourselves infinite mind and all of its ideas are in action in my thought, as my thought, then what we're doing is we're challenging ourselves. To a greater experience. We're challenging ourselves to a greater understanding. And if we do this, all of a sudden we discover that this affirmation is expanding our consciousness. We're expanding out, as, uh, as Jack Addington taught so beautifully, increase the size of your circle. Increase the size of your understanding. Include more and more and more into your idea of yourself. More good, more love, more health, more happiness. It's easier to be intelligent than stupid. How many found that out? <laughs> See, the idea is to be smart enough to know that you have the awareness to realize that no matter what you're doing or what you're choosing, God is in full operation. It's in full operation as you. And as we celebrate this gift that we are to this thing called life, all of a sudden we discover automatically we are dismissing Every past and present idea of lack, every past and present idea of stinginess, every past and present idea of limitation, doubt, fear, we're saying you are no longer 
welcome in my subjective mind and my subconscious mind. I now free myself from you and replace you with the beautiful. And I do it now. I do it now. You see, the truth which we know sets us free. It sets us free from nonsense. It sets us free from nim compoopery. It sets us free to do what? To have a larger life. To move forward in life with a greater freedom in money, a greater freedom in health, a greater freedom in success and love. Will Rogers said, our challenge is when we leave this thing called life is to leave the wood pile higher than it was when we got here. <clears throat> to make a difference, a positive difference in this thing called life. This Wednesday night we had our candle lighting service and as I was standing out here with all of you wonderful people, I began to automatically contemplate the memories of this wonderful center and all the people who stood here to contemplate as I look at this platform and this lectern to know that our last Christmas here is filled with a history, a history of the people who stood in this platform. Dr. Robert Bitzer, Dr. Raymond Charles Barker, Dr. Erlene Castellaw, Arlene Bump, who's still with us, Dr. Carol Neagle, Leo Epperson, all the people who come down that I haven't mentioned that we all love, but all of these dedicated men and women, where I'm doing a very special series in January because Dr. Craig Carter, when we purchased this building and this property in 1985, Dr. Carter flew up from San Diego to dedicate our building and our future. Dr. Carter was a very, very important, probably the most important teacher I ever had, but he was also important to this church and this teaching here because he came here so often to share his consciousness with us and to inspire us into the greatness that he knew was possible for us, and we honor him. In January, probably one of the best metaphysical books that has ever been written is How to Use the Power of Mind by Dr. Craig Carter. The Science of Mind publication has let it go out of publication, and Dr. Carter left all everything he had to me. And so Cynthia and I, we are, pub we are going to republish two of these books. I've already written the foreword for our handbook to healing, and we're going to reproduce and publish uh, How to Use the Power of Mind. And we're going to be doing a Wednesday night service every Wednesday in January on How to Use the Power of Mind, and we're going to print up a copy for everyone who's here for that. So we'll be doing that every Wednesday, not only in, uh, in honor of you, but in honor of the dedication and the commitment and the gift he gave to us. Everyone say, I am now open, I am now open. to be an on-time person, to, be an on -time person. To, meet all my obligations. to meet all my obligations in good order, in good order. With, joy. with joy, because I know the law of mind. And I know the law of mind. And I know the law. Let's what I affirm, what I affirm. Take, take place. So what are you taking place? What's taking place in your heart and mind? As we move through this Christmas season, keep in mind something wonderful and beautiful. How many can think back about beautiful Christmases in your memory? Everyone say, I let this one be one of them. If you have children around you, create a Christmas this year filled so much with love that when they're your age, the children around you, they will remember this Christmas. They will remember you and the love that you shared with them. You see, that way we never die in the hearts and minds of those who love us and in the hearts and minds of us when we love those who have gone before us. See, it's wonderful to be free from worry, isn't it? It's wonderful to be free from doubt. It's wonderful to be free from fear. It's wonderful to have this freedom, but the challenge is, is to take that wonderful and do something wonderful with it. Everyone say, I'm full of wonder. I'm full of, I'm full of, light. I'm full of light. Dr. Raymond Charles Barker said, divine prosperity is also divine ease. Divine <laughs> Isn't that great? Say it. 
divine prosperity is divine ease. And that's the gift. Our gift is there's a power within us that says be prosperous. How? Be prosperous in love, be prosperous in health, be prosperous in happiness. Be prosperous in appreciation for yourself because of why? If you will open up the gift of appreciation of yourself, you will discover yourself appreciating everything in your life more. If you give more love to yourself, you're going to be able to give more away. Don't ever give more to anything in your life than you're giving to you or you'll cave in on yourself. So our challenge is to reinforce our positive self-awareness how often? Every day. Dr. Holmes said yesterday's treatment is not good enough for today. Yesterday's awareness is not good enough for today. Yesterday's affirmation is not good enough for today. What are you doing today? You see, as we celebrate our gift of consciousness, what happens? We find ourselves inspiring ourselves, not waiting for somebody else to do it or something else to do it. Dr. Holmes said, we are a song worth singing. Sing it. <laughs> We're a song worth singing. Say, say that to somebody next to you. You're a song worth singing. Sing it. <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh-oh, you ran Debbie off. <laughs> now, what are we doing? When we sing our song, what we're doing Aren't we enhancing our sense of beauty? Aren't we enhancing our sense of love? And doesn't that sense of love and beauty expand and begin to take in more and more and more? We have challenges. And if we're going to be a better person in any way, in every way, what we need to do is be a definition of a better person in action before we let go and let it happen. I define myself in a higher way. The lesson here is that in spiritual ways we prosper. Say that with me. In spiritual ways I prosper. Always. In spiritual ways we always prosper. So what is a spiritual way? It didn't run around being holier than thou. It didn't knocking on doors and trying to convert people. Dr. Holmes said the only thing we need to be saved from is people trying to save us. Because the only thing we need to be saved from is our own nonsense. The only thing we need to be saved from is our own idea that when we say I am and put something negative after it, we're not doing anything but doing what? Limiting ourselves. Because the power within us can only say yes. So if we say I am, put something beautiful after it. The creative mind of God is forever changing things but never changes its own nature. It's forever changing things, but it never changes its own ch nature. Dr. Holmes, Dr. Carter, Dr. Barker, every great metaphysical teacher has taught very clearly the only thing in the universe that will never change is change. Because change happens. My dear friend and colleague, Jim Terrell, says shift happens. <laughs> Everyone say, I shift in consciousness, I shift in consciousness. and my world changes for the better. My if my consciousness changes for the better. How many are waiting for it to get better so you can feel better? You got it wrong, people, if that's what you're doing. Everyone say, I feel better, I feel so better. it gets better. That's the gift. I define myself in a healthier, happier way, and it gets better. I create in my own mind, you know, Walt Disney called it imagineering. What are you imagining in your own mind about you? The creative mind is forever changing. Its nature never changes. And so it does what? It remains intent on doing what? Producing whatever we think about. All things are new if it is in consciousness. All things are new if it is in self-definition. The creative mind in us, as us, serves itself as us. Because it is us. And as we faithfully do something, as we faithfully do what? Keep ourselves, our thought, our feelings, our expectancy in a forward positive way. All of a sudden we find ourselves moving forward in a positive way. Free from anything and everything that has limited us in the past 
and all of a sudden we discover very clearly through metaphysical understanding that it lets itself as us grow. It lets itself as us pursue great and new ideas. It lets itself as us begin to discover new and beautiful things, ideas about ourself and our life, and apply those ideas, not just determining it belongs to somebody else. 